Hey, thanks for joining me in this uh, 2D game development series that I'm actually going to be broadcasting live. Um, I've been doing some research on some tools that are out there. You know, you've got the uh, the Cry Engine and you've got the Unreal Engine, but uh, another uh, really good tool out there is something called Unity 3D. And the great thing about it is it does both 2D and 3D uh gaming uh, or, or visual simulation application so um, it's a very powerful tool set from what I've read and it's something I want to use to uh, generate or create my first 2D game so uh, I've never used Unity before so this will be a video series where as I learn um, you'll get to see me learn you'll get to see the mistakes I make uh, the things I do right and wrong and uh, the struggles I go through so um, feel free to chime in if you know you're out there viewing viewing my stream and you have a little bit ex little bit of experience in developing games or uh, specifically with the tool set I'm using uh, if there's you know any information you can uh, provide to me to speed me along the process that, that would be great so anyways uh, to get started here, I want to go ahead and show you this uh, list I came up with of some tools that if you want to follow along with what I'm about to do, um, these are the tools that you'll need. Uh, the first is the uh, Microsoft Visual Studio IDE Community 2017 Edition. That's the free edition of Microsoft's um, professional development um, tool, it's an IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment, and it's going to be basically the, the editor that we'll use to um, write and modify and edit and basically maintain any script code that we write uh, for Unity. So, um, you know, it's, it's a more robust um, editor that, that can be used for programming instead of the built-in one that comes with Unity. So um, anyway, so if, in order to download that you would go to this website. It's www.visualstudio.com. So if you type in that web address in your browser, um, you will... Let me bring this up. I actually typed these out so that they're up on the screen but so this is the first one the visual studio.com and you'll get to this screen here for the Microsoft Visual Studio developer tools they have got several different versions of it as you can see the one we're interested in is the Visual Studio IDE which is right here on the left uh, if you hover over the download for Windows um, you're gonna get three editions there the community is the free one. So again, that's the one we're going to choose. The other two are um, paid programs or subscriptions. And so, you know, at this beginner stage, there's no need to get a professional version or an enterprise uh, and pay hundreds or even thousands of dollars for a tool set that, you know, we're just kind of doing this more as a hobbyist type uh, adventure. So anyways, choose the community 2017. Uh, download that onto your system. Uh, I'd recommend um, if you're not sure what to install. Um, you know, as you go through the installer, there you can go with the defaults. You can customize it. Um, you want to make sure that um, you download. Well, it's probably best to just choose all the options if you have plenty of space, and, and that's what I did. I, I installed everything. Um, so I wouldn't have to worry about re-downloading any part of the Visual Studio tool set if I needed it, you know, somewhere down the road as we're going through this 2D game development. So download that and install it. Uh, the second product you'll need is Unity itself. And you can get that from unity3d.com. Uh, if you click in the products link, it'll take you to this page. And again, they have and theirs is actually on, on three different plans. You get the personal, which is the one we'll use, 
It's a free edition for beginner students and hobbyists. Or you can pay $35 a month for the plus and you go pro for 125 a month. Again, we're not going to do any of that. Uh, we don't need it at this stage of the game. Uh, you know, if we're if we get to the point where we develop something that is worth publishing, maybe out there uh, in the Unity Store, then then we'll look at doing that, uh, or on Steam or something like that. So uh, we'll look at getting a uh, a license and uh, upgrading it. Um, and actually, under the personal, it's a free edition. You can sell whatever you create and earn up to 100k in revenue per. Um, I don't know if it's per year or if it's uh, one time. I think it's one time, up to 100k. If you exceed that, then you can you have to get the plus plan, which will allow you to earn up to 200k in revenue. And then if you go pro, it's an unlimited. Uh, uh, revenue stream there you can whatever revenue you earn there's no royalties or anything with anything you create with unity that's that's what's great about it um, you just pay you just paying the 125 a month once you're on or 35 a month depending on what plan you have but again we're starting with the free so that's the option you'll click and download unity 2017 uh, on your system and again uh, I would choose to install everything available with that installer so that you don't later have to go and download anything special now the third thing we're going to need, obviously, when you're creating any kind of 2D game, um, it's going to involve graphics. So uh, you're going to need some kind of graphic editor to create the 2D images. Um, a free one that I like, and you don't, again, you, there's other free ones out there. But one that I like is called GIMP. You can go to www.gimp.org. You can see that at the top here. And that's the program name, GIMP. The current version is 2.8.22, so you want to download 2.8.22 and install that on your system as well, and that will give us a uh, you know pretty nifty little free paint editor that's better than the, the paint program that's built into Windows. Um, it's easier to use and it does layers like Adobe Photoshop does, which is a more professional level uh, photo editing uh, or graphic editing program. So. Um, Download GIMP, and uh, that's the one I'll be using. So if you want to follow along with anything that I do, uh, these are the three tools that you'll need. Now later on, I don't, you know, obviously in games you have sounds and sound effects. Um, I'm not really familiar with the best sound creation tool to use. So that's something I'll research later on when it comes to that point where, um, you know, I'm worried about sound effects and, and things of that nature. So. Um, you know, I did a quick Google search and sound effect creation software, uh, found some links, and there's several out there. <clears throat> and they list, actually, if you look in the sidebar, of Game Engines Unity is the top one that they have here. Um, and so, but anyways, there's some, I'll probably look at this later. There's some uh, creating music, digital audio editors and music studios. Reaper, I heard, is good, but that's paid. Um, so I'm going to be looking for a free one. If anyone knows of a free one, well, here's the one I was looking for originally. It was Audacity. It's free. Free for Windows. Yeah, okay, so that's the program I was actually looking for, Audacity. I've heard of that. And that may be the one I'll use. I don't know if there's something easier or something better out there. I don't really know how to use Audacity, so it wouldn't matter if I change to another tool set or not, or a different program. Uh, so I am familiar a little bit with Visual Studio. That's why I'm, I chose to use it as the editor of choice instead of the built-in one with the Unity. Plus Unity, you know, works seamlessly with it anyways. Um, and I've played around a little bit with the 2015 version of Unity, but it was going back two years ago. So. Um, and I was just kind of fiddling around for like a week. So, you know, I kind of know what its capabilities are for, you know, from what I went through. So that's the tool set. Um, again, I'll pop up that list. Um, you might want to pause at this point or either screenshot these or write them down. But uh, the websites are listed after each product. Uh, the Microsoft Visual Studio, the Unity 2017. Um, 
in GIMP 2.8. And then some type of program to create music and sound effects, which I think will tentatively will be Audacity, but it may change depending on uh, what I research later or what you know someone watching this may may tell me. So um, again, I don't know. I'm not just so I'm clear. I I am not a game developer um, by trade. My uh, uh, background is IT, but it's more on you know PC repair, networking, running cables, hardware based. Um, I have dabbled in some software development. I've done some websites. Uh, I know a little bit, you know, just a little bit of everything to be a little bit dangerous. Uh, but enough to kind of get something done if I need to. Uh, but I've never used Unity 3D to create a game other than the week that I spent with the 2015 version two years ago. And anyway, so I'm at a point now where I've played enough video games out there over the years uh, throughout my life. You know, I grew up in an arcade when I was a teenager and continued to play on consoles and, and moved into PC gaming um, all genres of games and I've tried just about everything um, may not have liked certain games but I've tried every style of game out there and anyways I've gotten to a point where uh, I'm getting almost burnt out on, or tired of just playing the games uh, you know doing the grind and I uh, you know I want to learn how to actually create a game and uh, you know I'm starting with a 2D game which Traditionally, they say, from what I've read, is easier to create than a 3D game. Um, and again, I'm using Unity because we're actually going to be using the 3D environment of Unity. But um, we're going to be working in a 2D, the 2D access only, the X and Y. We're not going to worry about the Z, uh, which the Z is used for the third dimension or the perspective type view where you're going to see things in the distance which make things appear it makes a game appear 3d it's that z-axis so we're not going to really worry about that we're going to uh, lock the z-axis at, at zero which essentially would not allow any anything we move around in unity to move forward or back in the view it's going to only be able to move up down left and right more or less sideways and up and down so <coughs> if you think of any traditional or classic games, the uh, platformer or the side scroller, the parallax uh, scroller type games, uh, Super Mario, the originals, you know, they were all parallax scrolling or side scrolling type games. So um, you've got the original classics, the Pac Man, the uh, um, Centipede, and, and uh, Galaga, you know, some of those games, uh, those are all 2D games. So we're going to come up with something. I don't know exactly what yet, and that's another thing I'll be thinking of for the next video. Uh, but in this first video, what I wanted to do was get the information out uh, on what tool set was needed and uh, or what are the tools needed to, to get started. And, and again, the hardware, uh, I didn't really touch hardware. And that was part of this. Um, hardware that's required is not uh, going to be very demanding. Um, Basically, you'll need to look at um, the Unity specs, and, and let's see if I can pull that up because that's going to be the program that would require the most processing power as, as well as uh, RAM. So let's go ahead and pull that up and see if we can find out um, anything about that. Like I said, we're going to be doing the free edition. And I don't see anything in the quick links here. Frequently asked questions about that. Let's see if we can, maybe we can just search their site. Just say hardware requirements for Unity PC. Let's say Windows hardware requirements for Unity. Okay, here's Unity system requirements. And so let's look at that. 
Okay, for development, for the for the operating system, which runs on your computer, it has to be Windows 7 Service Pack 1 Plus, which means one or higher, uh, Windows 8 or Windows 10, 64-bit versions only. That's important. Your system has to have a 64-bit version of Windows, regardless of whether it's Windows 7, 8, or 10. Um, and Mac OS X 10.9 Plus um, ser says server versions of Windows and OS X are not tested. doesn't necessarily mean it won't run on that. It just means that they haven't tested it. They've got it um, testing on standard Windows desktops and Mac OS X, which is essentially a desktop operating system. So if you're not sure whether you have a 64-bit version of Windows or not, uh, Mac, I don't really know much about it, so you'll have to, you Mac users will have to determine that. I'm assuming that all Macs are using the new ones that have to, the Intel architecture. They're going to be 64-bit processors. Um, but what you can do is uh, to find out in your current Windows system, if you, you press and hold the Windows key on your keyboard and also tap the pause break key on the keyboard at the same time. So Windows pause break that will pop up this screen right here which is what I'm looking at. You should get your system properties. The other way to get to that is you go to the, uh, well I'll just show you. If you click down here on the folder icon this is Windows 10 where it says this PC if you right click go to properties <coughs> it's going to bring up the same thing but the shortcut key is the Windows pause break that will bring that up. So let's expand that so we see. What we're looking for is under the system area here you've got processor this is what I have. I have an AMD A8 5500 APU with Radeon HD graphics, 3.2 gigahertz. And actually, that's not true. Uh, I have a uh, a uh, what we call a discrete graphics card installed in one of the slots. It's a uh, NVIDIA GTX 660. It's a uh, three generations behind the current model that's out there. So. You know, you got the 10, 10 series, the 1060s, 70s, 80s. Uh, I'm at a 660. So uh, that's another reason I'm doing 2D, a 2D game for now. Uh, it's not to say that I mean, I have, my computer can run 3D games. I do play 3D games. So uh, it's not like my hardware is not, you know, fast enough or the graphics technology is not good enough to, to do that. Uh, I chose to do 2D to keep it simple because this is about learning and you got to get your feet wet first before you really just dive in. So uh, the 3D stuff, once we conquer this 2D and get kind of somewhat an expert at that, I'll move on to, uh, you know, investigating the 3D side of Unity and, and building a, you know, an FPS type game or something along that lines. But um, maybe an RPG, MMO, I'm not sure yet. That's uh, for later on sometime in the future. So anyways, you look at your system type. 64-bit, so that's what I have. It's good. You should say the same. It's a 32-bit operating system. Um, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to run Unity. Um, now, your hardware, it's possible that your hardware, you might have a 64-bit processor, but a 32-bit version of the operating system installed. Um, if you have an older type of system, when Windows 10 first came out, they were releasing the 32-bit first, and then later on they did the 64. So um, it's possible you could buy an upgrade to your operating system, and, and it should work fine. You just upgrade your OS, and then once you're on that 64-bit operating system, then you go from there. But check with your hardware manufacturer to make sure it can be upgraded to a 64-bit. Don't just go out and spend, you know, 100 to 140 dollars, whatever the price is, on a 64-bit operating system. And and then it don't install in your system because it doesn't have a genuine 64-bit processor as well as there's some other technologies that need to be on that in order for it to, to use that OS. So um, anyway, just check with your hardware manufacturer and make sure it, it can be upgraded. Uh, the more RAM you have in your system, the better, especially with doing any kind of development. So, you know, my system has 16 gigs. It's probably going to be adequate. But if this was a professional development system, personally, I would want 64 gigs maxed out. Uh, you know, some kind of you know, at least 32, but 64 would be what I'd really want. And you know, like a like a GTX 10 1080 
TI card or something like that would be more than sufficient. Um, you know, professional developer or graphics workstations for animation and stuff like that, they have some, you know, really high end systems that probably run about five grand or so uh, to 10 grand range, depending on what their role is and what they do. But uh, for what we're doing here, this is all you really need. Uh, a basic system. I've got a quad core. My AMD is the equivalent of an Intel um, quad core. Um, so it's like an i5, the equivalent of an i5, I guess, or maybe not as not as peppy as that, but somewhere between the i3 and i5. Most of the i3s are, are dual core, but um, this is a quad core. And I have 16 gigs of RAM with a NVIDIA GTX 660. So that's, uh, you know, an entry level, the equivalent of an entry level gaming system nowadays so um, that'll give you an idea of you know what when we go through this what what this kind of system can do as far as game development goes so uh, let me close that close all this and so that's our system requirements um, yeah that's what I was talking about the additional in addition to the OS you want to make sure your CPU supports the SSE2 Intel instruction set support so um, that's going to be, you'll have to look up your processor and see if it has that instruction set because um, a lot of these programs, especially sophisticated programs like game development tools, uh, they write this stuff with some low level commands that uh, directly access the CPU and they expect those instruction set or commands to be available within that processor or that CPU. So make sure your CPU supports that. And then with graphics, really, it's just saying you have to have a DX10 uh, capable capable card, and uh, so mine is a actually supports DX11. So, um, so that tells you I've got you know a three or four year old graphics card that still supported DX11. So uh, we're good there. Now for running Unity games, I mean generally it's going to be the less the the uh, what do you call it the system requirements. Are usually less to actually run it a little bit more for when you're developing, but more or less, you know, you can your development system can be your testing system to run your your games as well. And and the great thing about Unity is that it allows you uh, when you create a game in Unity, it allows you to um, it's a cross development tool, so it allows you to create it once and build it. And, and build it for multiple platforms so you can one you know you, you create the app the game or app uh, one time and you can push it out to you know like a Mac OS so create a Windows version um, something for the phone um, you know whatever it may be Steam OS you know you see right here it's showing for desktop you know you can do a Steam OS Ubuntu which is Linux Mac OS Windows Vista or higher, any of those. Um, so it supports all that and it's really easy to do it according to the docs. So, um, and from what I've read, it's, it's a great tool for cross platform development. All right, so, so those are the main tools we need. So uh, I guess we're going to leave off here with, uh, you know, We'll end this video at this point. Just I wanted to cover the system requirements for Unity, uh, the kind of hardware you would at least need, minimum hardware, computer hardware, and uh, operating system, any software tools, which we've gone over. And again, I'll leave that up here. Um, so I encourage you to go ahead and, you know, if you want to follow along, download each of those tools in the, in the order I have listed. Um, you do want to have for best installation of Unity with integration with Visual Studio, you do want to have the Visual Studio installed first on your computer. So uh, if you do want to use the Microsoft Visual Studio IDE, make sure you download that Community 2017 edition and install it with you know basically all the options and uh, and then do the Unity download and install it. Now both of those are fairly you know I don't want to say super large downloads, but they're they're a good size. Um, I don't think they're as massive as some of these games now that are having these 12 gig downloads and all that. I think they're just a couple couple gig, you know, one or two gigs, maybe three. Uh, I don't really know exactly, but um, plan on spending a couple of hours getting everything set up. And 
and definitely follow me if you want to keep up on when I go live and, and watch the content live and maybe follow along and be able to ask questions and get live feedback from me or give me, you know, maybe tips and pointers. You know, you just, you know, like I said, if you know more than I do, uh, feel free to type in the chat and uh, contribute. Um, we're going to learn this together. So, you know, as I learn, you learn. And as, if you have anything to contribute as well that can help me learn, uh, feel free to, to let me know. So, again, I, I hope to see, uh, you know, several viewers. I, you know, I'm not going to, you know, say I'm doing this to get viewers, but it's always good to have uh, some viewers out there that are watching and, and uh, are participating in the chat and being vocal and, and asking questions. And um, so if you're interested in 2D game development, um, you know, definitely follow me and um, just watch for my next uh, live feed. Till then, y'all take care.